Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Web Developers Room. My name is Nicole, and I'm going to be your host for today's panel. I would like to begin by gratefully acknowledging that Science World is located on the traditional and unceded territory of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the tsleil nations. We will start today with a quick introduction from our amazing group of mentors, followed by a hosted discussion. If you have questions for the mentors, please feel free to pop those in the chat at any time. Our technician today is Sarah, who will be monitoring the chat. If you have any technical issues, she'd be more than happy to assist. We ask that you keep comments in the chat and questions section respectful and relevant to the topics being discussed. All right, so now it is time for us to meet our mentors. Let's bring them up on screen. Hello, hello, good morning. So I'm gonna ask that each of you take a moment and introduce yourself, your job, and your favorite thing about your job. Now, Rosie, you're right next to me, so I'm gonna start with you. Sure, um, my name's Rosie and I'm a declarative developer, which means I don't use code to do my development. Um, and the, my favorite thing, uh, I have two favorite things about my job. Um, one is helping our customers and we work with sustainability. So we're working with them on those kinds of projects. And then I love uh, coaching and mentoring uh, people on my team to become developers and other parts of the business. So great to be here. Awesome. Thank you. Ellen. Hi, um, I'm Ellen. My job title is UX UI designer, which means user experience and user interface designer. Um, my favorite thing about my job is getting to collaborate with a wide variety of people from a lot of different backgrounds and disciplines. So from developers to marketing and various people like that. And I always get to learn a lot of really cool things from the different people I meet. So that's my favorite thing. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. And Juliana. Hi, everybody. I'm Juliana. Um, and I'm coming from unceded Shaquemic territory in the interior of BC. So just throwing that in. Um, I, right now, I work mainly as a digital marketer and I do digital product development. So like Rosie and Len, um, probably the favorite, my favorite thing about my job right now is the variety of different people I get to interact with to create products and to create digital marketing experiences from back-end developers to front-end developers and user experience people. Uh, and yeah, and the thing that I like best about my job is just like trying to improve people's experiences online and be able to give them, you know, what they're looking for with as little friction as possible. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you all for being here this morning. We're going to open up our discussion now to any questions from the chat. So if you have any burning questions for our mentors, feel free to pop those in there. But while maybe we're thinking of those, let's just get started right from the get go. What got you started on your path to your career? So I'm going to go same order for now. Rosie, how'd you get started? It was a bit of an accident, to be honest. Um, so I actually used to be in finance and accounting. So I was a bit of an accountant um, and I was it just really wasn't for me. And I actually found my way into software and web development uh, by working for a financial software company. So it was kind of an accident, a happy accident. And now I've been doing this now for a really long time and I love it. So that's how it started. Awesome. Ellen, how'd you get started? Um, for me, it was when I was choosing where I wanted to go to university and what I wanted to do, because I really wasn't sure. I just kind of knew I wanted to do something with technology, but wasn't really sure I wanted to, to do computer science type thing and like code every day. So I went to um, Simon Fraser University in the Vancouver area, and I ended up going into like a technology and design program that was quite broad. So I got to do a little bit of um, development and coding as well as like photography, videography, animation type things. And then also a lot of design related things. And I just got to try out a lot of things that I liked and a lot of things that I didn't really like. And I just kind of learned along the way and eventually found my way into design. And with a lot of like really great mentors in university, I think that's kind of what helped guide me there. Um, but yeah, so I just eventually ended up in design kind of accidentally as well. I didn't really know I would end up doing that from that degree program. I thought it was going to be a bit more technology driven, but it is still quite technology driven. So I really enjoy it and I'm glad it worked out that way. Awesome. Thank you. Juliana, let's talk about your path. Uh, another accidental <laughs> path into uh, 
the world of digital. I actually started my first career at the university. Um, I was as an archaeologist. Um, and I've all, well, I mean, like the interesting thing about archaeology that is it's, it's a lot of interpreting human behavior as well, right? So um, I actually got really burnt out of field work for a while. So I ended up taking like, a, like, fancy office job in like gas town in Vancouver when it was all hip and I was young enough to like think that that was like a great for me so I did that but it was at the start of sort of what we call now web 2.0 when things like Twitter and blogging technology and all of this sort of stuff like WordPress was just sort of blowing up and so it was a really really interesting time to get into digital and tech and it allowed me to do a whole bunch of different things and explore a whole bunch of areas uh, from digital marketing all the way through to digital product development as I sort of grew up in my career. So I've worn a lot of different hats along the way. And yeah, as I mentioned before, that's what's always kind of kept me in this industry, um, kind of trying out different things because there's just been such a, a wide variety of fulfilling um, areas to explore. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So we're, we've made it into this career. Let's talk a little bit about your day-to-day -day life. So what does a day in your job actually look like before we dive into some more specifics? What are you doing every day? Uh, I'm going to randomize the order a little bit. Uh, Alain, what's your day look like? <laughs> a typical day. Um, I would say it varies a lot day-to-day, um, -day, depending on the different like projects that I'm working on. Um, more recently, we were working on redesigning one of the web applications that the company I'm at. And I would say that was, that involved a lot of just like, I would start the day with kind of reviewing what I did the day before. And then I would just be making designs and working in Adobe XD and Figma to try and create interfaces and different iterations of it. And basically just making the same thing over and over and over again in slightly different ways. And then we always had like a daily meeting with my team. So I was on a team with, um, or am on a team with just um, like five other developers or a few more than that. And it would be just me as the sole designer kind of presenting those designs and asking for some feedback. And then I would go on, I would create some more designs. <laughs> so it was like a lot of working just like on iterating on different designs, but looking at different aspects. So it wasn't always the same part of the app, but I would also be exploring just how it was structured and things like that through diagrams and, and other things. So lots of it was um, on my computer, like working with Figma, but then also I would like work on a whiteboard, but like lots of sticky notes to try and kind of just figure out what I was thinking and where I wanted to go with things. And then I would show it to other people and see if it made sense and see what they thought and um, just kind of keep designing. So that's how it went. And I mean, eventually we've like launched the application now. So that was kind of a rough idea of what the process was for me day to day. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Rosie, what does your day to day look like? A typical? Very different too, all the time. So I think it's probably going to be the answer. Um, yeah. So I, from, I, I often meet with like clients to sort of figure out what they, they want to see in their web application. I work specifically with Salesforce. Um, so I'll meet with them often, try to figure out what they want to do, what they want to see, and then um, going away and sort of building that out for them. And then coming back and maybe not, not necessarily the same day, but coming back to them and showing them what we've built, kind of getting their, their approval on those kinds of things. Um, so it's kind of a lot of, it's a lot of collaboration. And then I'm working with also, I have a team of developers as well. So I'm working with them to help them and support them on their projects that they're working on with their clients. So, um, so every day is a bit different and it depends on, on the challenges, the technical challenges we're seeing, you know, things like scheduling challenges we're seeing and, and timelines and all that stuff. And then often we're, um, we're supporting our clients once we've built it and showing them how to use the system and training them and providing documentation on how to do all that stuff. So really every day is super, super different, which is awesome because you never get bored. Love so, it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Juliana, what does your day usually look like? Um, I have a couple habits in my day that I've brought in from other jobs. Like, so when I worked at a really big company with a big digital team, one of my first things that I would do every day is just take a look at what was happening in the industry, um, monitor sort of like news or blogs that I go to, be it like digital marketing, like just look at developing what's developing. I like to start my day in my coffee with like my email and like looking at what's happening in, in my industry in the world, right? So take the pulse, spend a little bit of time doing that. 
Um, and like I'm a really like mostly I work in digital marketing right now, as I've mentioned, and, and helping with product development. But so I'm a real what we call a T-shaped marketer, which like doesn't exist as much anymore. It means like a lot of breath. So I do a lot of different things. I also work for a smaller tech company. So that part of my job, I really enjoy. So I touch a lot of things in, over the course of the day from um, social media to checking out web analytics daily to sort of seeing um, you know, how our website is being used and like touching in even with our customer support agents about um, problems that maybe people have experienced on the website. So there's a gamut there. I also work closely as these two ladies do as well with our um, technical web development team. So usually like that's sort of like my morning, I'll do more of the sort of traditional digital marketing stuff, also work on any campaigns that I'm working in. Then in the afternoon, I tend to, um, <laughs> like we all bring different sort of skills to our product development. So I'm the one who's always like poking holes and stuff and asking questions like, but what do users want? What do you think? This is the way you developed it. But is that the experience that people want? So I, I do a lot of research on that end because, um, I like try to bring that into sort of the technical side because I work with a lot of really technical people. So being able to understand them, but bring sort of a more empathetic user focused experience into the process of developing stuff. Um, that's sort of what I bring to that web development team at my current job. So yeah, I mean, that's probably a normal day, but like, like these people, like depending on what whatever's happening, that can switch up quite a bit. Awesome. I love, yeah, everybody sounds like your day is something different every day. And I just think that brings a little bit of excitement and adds a little bit of motivation, I think, to your day, right? Which is awesome. So let's talk a little bit about maybe some skills that have helped you in this day to day, helped you get to where you are today. Um, something that maybe 14 year old you um, could start thinking about to work on and develop to get yourself to where you are. I'm going to bounce around. Let's go back to Rosie. Skills. I don't know. That's a good question for my 14 year old self. Um, I, I think for me, like I've been like just curiosity, to be honest, it's not really a skill, but I think that's a big thing for me um, in terms of like figuring out the best way to, to go about what I'm developing and what I'm building. And I think being curious about what our customers, our clients want and what they're looking for and being curious about you know, not just the customer, but then the end users. So who's looking at, you know, somebody's website and all that stuff. So I think being curious and asking questions like and researching is is probably are probably some really good skills to 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 hone in on. I, I yeah, just being really curious and asking a lot of questions. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Alain, what about some skills that you think would be helpful to start thinking about? Yeah, I think one of the really big things for me that helped like throughout university and now would be communication skills and looking really specifically at just kind of being able to describe why you are making a certain decision or why something does or doesn't work. The why behind it was always really important. And if I'm I come up with a design for the development team, I need to really be able to say like why this is important and why we we do need to update this in the app because if they don't know why then they're kind of like well do we really want to spend time doing it but mm -hmm. so you have to really be able to explain why things are important in a way that um, people who aren't necessarily a designer would understand so I would say communication skills and just being able to communicate the design clearly and the decisions that you've made and and why you made them would be a really good skill to have. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Juliana, what would you uh, like I'm just kind of smiling because my two <laughs> things were curiosity and communication. <laughs> but like, it really is foundational to everything you're going to do, right? Um, so the curiosity element is really about your users. It's about the people you work with, really getting into understanding their decision making process and what's motivating them. So that's always, you just want to ask questions. You want to, you like, that's how you create better user experiences and better everything. Digital marketing campaigns is just really asking the questions and being curious about like the person on the other end of whatever you're doing in whatever role it is. Um, Ellen covered communication really well. The one thing and that she was pretty much talking about too that I had in was like persuasiveness, right? So um, two things is being able to like learn how to communicate in a pers persuasive way to make your case and to be able to show with with backup, like sh like show your evidence for why you're making a specific 
um, argument or a specific recommendation to have something built. Like, like Helen was saying, like, you know, you're going to have to argue for resources to get certain things done. You're going to have to rank the importance of different things you're advocating for. So being able to persuade and back it up with data um, why you're advocating for a certain thing, be it like putting all your money into doing digital ads versus social or like fixing this user experience by adding this feature versus doing something else, like being able to, to, to like know how to talk to your audience because they're all going to have different, like they're going to come at it from different angles, whether it's like your finance person who's like, I'm not giving you that much money to do that. Or your web development person who's just like, that's going to take like, X amount of more hours, and I really don't see it giving us that much additional lift or benefit. So, yeah, persuasion skills like the sooner you can build those for yourself, like you'll, yeah, it'll be a really important part of pretty much any job you take. Awesome. Thank you. And I do just want to take a moment and remind anybody watching if you have any burning questions, you can throw those in the chat and we will ask them. Um, so, I'm hearing a lot of uh, design and creativity required in your jobs. And I'm curious, how do you deal with creative burnout? Because um, if you're designing things all day long, what happens when you hit that wall? Do you have any skills, strategies, advice for that uh, creative burnout? What can you work on instead, maybe? Or where can you find some extra motivation and inspiration? I'm going to let you all think on that for a second. I feel like that's a big, hard question. <laughs> I mean, my answer for that is always like, like, I mean, it's very simple. I, for me, it's, I do a lot of writing also. It's just like, it's stepping away. Honestly, it's looking outside, like even looking out the window and resetting your focus, like going outside for 20 minutes, like, like, like feeling like sitting on the grass or whatever it is, right. Kind of resets like the bogged down thinking that you're in just because like you've so much like physically removed yourself and you're like, your senses are experiencing all sorts of different things. I find that that like really will um, engage, like make me clearer. And the other thing is just, uh, it's really hard, but getting off technology for a while. Like there's a reason why we'll have our like ideas in the shower or whatever, right? <laughs> because we're just like, we're not in a constant feedback loop of stuff, right? So if you can remove yourself from a feedback loop of like being hit by, you know, alerts and people asking you questions on chat and this, that, and the other, um, then that'll, I think, re-engage your creativity and re-engage your problem solving. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And Rosie or Alain, do either of you have something to add to? Yeah, I do. Um, I like really, really agree with um, Juliana and what she said. Um, and then I think the other part would be when I get a little bit stuck and I'm not really sure where I'm going anymore, or kind of hit a wall with, with what I'm working on, just kind of like, I'll take a break for a little bit, but then I'll like schedule a meeting and just talk it through with some of the other designers or even like my team lead. And then I can kind of lay out like what my process has been and where I've gotten to. And then they'll kind of ask some questions that just get you thinking in a different way or yeah, I find that can really help me out. Even if they don't have anything to add, I just like talking it through and presenting it to someone. Then I realize like I've kind of analyzed my process a little bit more and I can kind of take a step back and I'm like, Oh, why did I do that? Or maybe I can explore that Avenue a little bit more. So just kind of talking it through, um, and then like how Juliana was kind of saying, like getting away from technology and I'll just like draw on a whiteboard for a little bit and kind of map out what what I'm doing and what kind of the issue is and write down certain parts of it on a sticky note and kind of rearrange things and just kind of working more tangibly with my hands can be a good way to just think things through, kind of not being constrained to the, the like box that you have to work in, like in a um, in an app on your uh, laptop or whatnot. So, yeah, that would be probably my top things. Awesome. Thank you. Rosie, what about you? I totally agree. I think the <laughs> stepping away from whatever you're sort of stuck with or you're burning out on and just switch about what you're trying to work on or what you're stuck on can just, yeah, sometimes just talking out the process like gets other things going. Um, and I agree with like sort of stepping away from a screen and trying to to use other formats. I have my pen and notepad in front of me at all times. And um, sometimes just writing things out and drawing things out have, um, you know, really helped that that thought process, that creative process. And yeah, so yeah, take a walk, go outside, mm -hmm. take your dog out for a walk, do something like that. Just kind of just change up the scenery. 
the biggest changer for me. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's fantastic advice. Um, let's think about maybe something that surprised us a bit about uh, your industry. So getting into the work, we maybe all have these preconceived notions of what it means to be a web developer, to work in tech. Um, can you tell me about something that really surprised you? I'm looking at all your faces. Rosie, you just look ready to answer. Sure. <laughs> um, I mean, I think the the biggest thing for me was I, I that so much you're working so much with people like you're just collaborating with them all the time. And I think when you think about web developing or coding or design and that kind of thing, you think you're going to be sitting at a desk, staring at a screen, sort of just plunking away at your keyboard. Um, and it's not that I find that that's actually not a huge part of my job all the time. Like a lot of it is that collaboration with the customers, with um, our team. Um, and then, you know, again, showing them what you've built once you kind of taken that away and come back to them. And so I think just there's there's a lot more interaction and collaboration with people um, than I, I thought I would ever come across when working in tech. So. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Juliana. Yeah, I was thinking about that one. And I don't know, that's a little bit of a stumper for me. Like, I agree with Rosie. And um, like, I, uh, the other thing I would just say is just technological advancement. Like the thing is like how quickly something can come in and sort of disrupt um, like the ways you're doing things, be it like in product development or design or marketing, right? Like, I mean, not exactly a great example, but like a relatable example is just say like how big TikTok became in such a short amount of time, right? And like how that changes like the way people advertise and changes the way they present stuff online now, like shorter and shorter video snippets, right? Rather than a, like it just like the disrupt how quickly disruption can happen in an industry when something takes off. Um, I think that's always kind of surprising and you know, something that you don't actually really get used to and it just kind of keeps happening, right? And you could kind of be surprised about like what the thing is or like it, it comes up and you're just like, that's crappy. Why would everybody want to spend all their money and do like this experience, right? And you're just like, how did this catch on? I That's part of being old. So that's <laughs> what I think about a lot of stuff. I'm just like, I don't get it. Um, and then you're like, all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's everywhere. And like, it, you got to like get your game up and, and, and understand what's happening. So I, I do like that part of the industry, right? It can catch you off guard. Awesome. Thank you. Ellen, what about you? What surprised you when you got into your work? I think like when I got my first um, job as a UX UI designer, the biggest thing was I was joining a team of all developers and they had never had a designer before. So I was just like coming from university where everyone was so familiar with design and the value of it. And you never really had to, you didn't have to justify it as much. I came into a team that had never had a designer before. And then they didn't really know what I was going to do exactly. And they were just so unfamiliar with design and the value of it. And so, yeah, I, I think that surprised me so much was just that they were so unfamiliar with design. But then the other side of it was they were like, they hired me for a reason. They wanted a designer on the team and they were really, really open to trying new things and just exploring what design could offer and how we could really improve the app with design. So um yeah i think some teams would have like just said like oh no that's too hard like that design that i came up with but this team we there were a couple people on it that were always like well anything's possible like we could really code almost anything um if you can justify it enough but so i was really fortunate to have such an open team even though they were so unfamiliar with design so um yeah probably the most shocking thing <laughs> yeah i would jump in to ellen's point which i think is interesting because um even though I've been out of this space for a long time, but just like the difference of like, I don't mean to be like real, it's all the real world, but like <laughs> work, right? And the constraints of work versus maybe sometimes the idealism of your educational experience or university or whatever that might be where you come from, which is you need that to be good at your job, right? But then when you get into budgets and constraints and you don't have the right people or you can't afford the right technology piece or tech stack to do something right it's um it forces you to be creative but it's also like it can yeah it's a that could be a surprise that i think starting out um maybe people aren't as prepared for yeah that's a really really good point 
Um, okay, I want to twist the discussion just a little bit, and I want you to think back to your favorite project that you've ever worked on, and I would love to hear about that because I can imagine we've got a wide variety of things that maybe we've worked on. So I'm going to let you volunteer while you think. If anybody knows right off the bat what their favorite thing is. I can do it. In. Awesome. <laughs> Tell us about okay. It. So I've had um, the opportunity to work with nonprofits, which is really rewarding, I think is like a really wonderful, heartwarming thing. So um, I got to work with a, um, an, an organization called Teen Feed and they were based out in Portland, Oregon. Um, and so they were working on a system um, where they, pro uh, to help them provide support to like teens and young adults um, who were look like essentially to give them a square meal like every day and a place to stay and access to resources and services like doctors and, and referrals and things like that. So it was really helping um, a, a set of teens that really needed help out there and, and really they needed a system to sort of get that done and help them get that done. And um, so that was really, really awesome to work with such a passionate and awesome team that were trying to help um, some people that were in need. So that was probably one of my favorite and most rewarding because the team was awesome to work with. And then of course, what they th what they were doing out in the world was also super cool. So yeah, that was my fave. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. All right, Elaine or Juliana, do either of you I have? Can, I can pop it. Um, like I really, really, I'm kind of a jack of all trades, but I really love research and I really love like being able to just have like a wide berth to do the research that I think is important to substantiate recommendations for building something. So um, when I worked at a big media company, this is quite a while ago, it was sort of before, it was like kind of on the cusp of like in car, we used to call it like infotainment, like the kind of whatever apps you would have in your car. And like it, Tesla had just come out. So I got to like hang out in like a, a Tesla and assess like the dashboard and try to figure out like how to build like a car um, app experience that would be safe and ideal and look at like what other like very, very incipient early sort of technologies were on there and what they were doing around safety and what they were doing around other things. So, um, and like, I also got to help like create like a very early podcast platform and that sort of stuff is always fun, right? Because it's like being able to, I like projects that you're, starting out in and their new technologies and it's kind of a green space so you you really get to kind of like go in and try everything and see what works and see what breaks and how to make it better and everything and so i like those kind of projects awesome thank you yeah that sounds great elen what is your favorite yeah i'm like trying to narrow it down like i'm not sure like i definitely have a couple top ones i would say probably probably my top one if i had to pick one was um i did a project where it was the only time that i ever did this but it was more of like an intensive um kind of program type thing but we were working on vr development and it was um for i think we did it for around like eight months to almost a year and we were just looking at how to design an actual user interface in vr and there wasn't a lot of like research around it so you're kind of trying things and then getting somebody to try it in VR and then see if that feels intuitive and you never really know until you, you try it out. But um, yeah, so we were designing VR projects for good and like that was the theme of it. So we were looking at different causes that we might want to raise awareness about. And um, one of the ones that I worked on was like the rising sea levels. Um, one of the other ones that I helped with with one of the teams was about um, uh, troubles with like immigration and how that process can be. So you, we put somebody in an experience where like the sea levels or the like the sea the water levels have risen and then they get to see how a specific city would look like if it actually rose that amount and, and things like that and just kind of navigating through those experiences. So I think that was one of the ones that's my favorite because I just learned so much from it and I got to really think outside the box and and try new things. Um, and I never really thought I would get to do that because I was never a developer. So we were with a team. It was the first time I got to work where it was like some developers, some designers, some people who are more about storytelling and, and things like that. So um, yeah, that one, I learned just so much about um, kind of that whole area and tried so many new things. So that sounds amazing. super cool. Like that. That does, yeah, that sounds really cool. Awesome. Okay. So um, let's, think back maybe to is there a course 
topic that you found very interesting, very helpful to where you are today. Um, starting to think about what kind of advice could we give to somebody who's wanting to start in this career? Are there courses to look out for, do you think? <laughs> I was going to say, uh, like, no, yeah. for me. There was, <laughs> maybe, maybe, there, yes, there's, all, I mean, all of it. And um, like, I, I just well, it's sort of, um, it's kind of tricky, right? Because it's the way you don't really know the way um, different courses are going to actually feed into your career, right? And mm -hmm. so um, I part of like my undergrad work was also like in in literature and and also um, in archaeology, both of which have really strong storytelling components, mm -hmm. which is always a big thing in anything that I've sort of done, be it from creating persuasive marketing campaigns to, um, you know, like what a customer journey should be like. So yeah, it's, um, so it's, you kind of don't like, I don't know. I don't like, yes, there's going to be certain foundational things that are going to have a bigger impact in your career. Like, you know, mathematics, if you're going to be doing, I don't know, like algorithmic based sort of like, coding right but like it's kind of surprising the elements that you might bring into things from just having a breath like exploring a wide variety of things that you find interesting when you're going to school right um none of that is lost yeah actually i like that angle of the question so are there any of those courses that yeah you maybe didn't directly relate to your mm -hmm. career now but you're finding have an impact in your career so mm -hmm. like you said those storytelling aspects that came out of those courses um Ellen or rosie do you have a thought yeah i can go um i think yeah i would i would agree with the idea that i didn't really know that they were going to be valuable while i was taking them and i never really knew what parts of the courses were actually going to be applicable like, like some a lot of the things that i was like this is exactly what i'm going to be doing like i don't do any of that like it's just so not related like it ended up being but i learned a lot just from like the process of doing certain certain courses but um i learned a lot from the game design course i would say i had to code like for that and, like make games um and i never ended up doing any like coding now in my job but um just learning about how to shape a user experience for a game so you want to have like certain things that are for rewards and certain like it has to have a certain amount of challenge and things like that to engage users so that was one that was really applicable but there were also other courses that you would kind of expect like they were design specific courses that I took. This is more like in university. I didn't really have the option in high school for like anything that would have been applicable. Like right. I took all the sciences and all of that. And I did find that like there are things from that that helped a lot. Like knowing some physics stuff helps you when you're working in VR and things mm -hmm. like that. You have to build your own physics and make sure that it acts like the real world. Um, but yeah, in university, like the design specific courses, there were there was one called speculative design, which um, it's hard to describe, but you basically just make a crazy project that you, you wouldn't want to actually exist in real life, but it's really about making people ask questions. And so we got to go through the whole process of creating user journey maps and things like that um, and looking at like user flows and designing like specific products, even though it was a crazy product that you'd never want to exist. But it really helped kind of push the limits of some of those design methodologies that I use now. So. Um, yeah, some of those crazier courses can be really helpful and some that you wouldn't expect to be too helpful really, really were. Um, but any courses where I got to collaborate with others, I would definitely say were valuable because I got to learn so much just from the people around me and developing like those communication skills mm -hmm. is also been so important um, and learning different ways to communicate clearly with others and getting used to software where you collaborate with others like Figma or whether you use Slack or something like that. So. Awesome. That sounds really cool. Um, Rosie, what about some courses that impacted your career, do you think? So I had also a very non-tech related university <laughs> program. I also strangely also did archaeology, but I also did psychology. And I think I agree with Juliana, there's like this element of storytelling. So I think any course that I took that was, um, you know, had any ways of communicating or um, telling a story, um, I think were probably the most important because that, again, is going to translate into how you are at work and how you communicate with your, your teams, with your customers and all of that as well. Um, and then again, I work with Salesforce. And so Salesforce actually has a lot of like um, their particular software, they have something called Trailhead online and it's free 
and you can go and build out software and practice and take different modules. Um, and so there's a lot of online, like free online um, things that you can try out and play with. Um, and like, yeah, so that that for me was a huge piece. I've been at my job with this Salesforce job for about five years and I had no experience with Salesforce um, before I started with them. Um, and so for me, that was a really great resource of sort of doing actual online building, um, but it was totally free and it was just a little bit of time. Um, and yeah, just it got me really used to sort of building things on my own. And so I found that super helpful as, later on in life as an adult. So uh, yeah, so I would go with that. I love that. Thank you all so much. Okay, so I'm going to ask kind of one more question here, uh, maybe two questions in one. So I would love to know your one piece of advice for um, somebody aged 13 to 16 who is maybe thinking about a career in web development. And at that same time, maybe you could also provide us with something that you're just excited about that could happen in the industry in the next five to 10 years. So let's give some advice from our advice for our viewers, but give them a little bit of excitement about something they could be getting themselves into. All right, um, Juliana. Oh, um, <laughs> advice, if I could give myself, my 14 year old, 15, 16 year old self, um, I advocate for yourself. I think like, I think it's a, it's a different, it's a different time now, but I mean, like, I did, like, you know, first of all, be yourself, be true to yourself and like, let yourself be curious and explore different things, but also like, learn, like advocate for your positions, right? If you feel strongly about like, I don't know, like something in your, I don't know, a uh, reason for doing something in your work or like you really want to like learn under a specific mentor like i would just like i would just try to like as much as you can pack up any shyness and like that sort of thing and just kind of like compartmentalize that and just like you you, you won't get the experiences unless you ask for them um, so, so, so don't be shy, go and try to learn under different people, go try a lot of different things and just sort of advocate for your ability to like experience as much as you can. Um, that's kind of general, but like, that's just like, I think in life, I think that'll just get you much more out of anything that you want to pursue. Right. Um, and where is in our, in terms of my industry and where are things going at the moment? I don't know. Who knows? Like, there's <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know. Augmented reality, VR, like, like deep sort of data. Like, um, it's like everything is accelerating really fast. And I think really, I think virtual experiences are just sort of like, Alain could probably speak to this more than me, or sort of the next wave of where things are going. So being able to sort of see what's developing in that area, if I was to think five years ahead, um, I think like, yeah, augmented reality and different areas like that is probably where there's going to be a lot of new things developing in terms of like how we market in those sorts of experiences to how we develop them. So looking ahead to sort of that in it as an area to kind of like map your skills towards, I think would provide a lot of sort of maybe possibility for job opportunity. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Alain. Um, so I think the advice I would probably give myself, which is probably like slightly cheesy is just to like try lots of things because like that was my degree was just mm -hmm. try all of these things and then see what you like. And you're going to have to do it for the first, like, year or two of the um of my university program but i got to try it all and really see there were like specific things that i liked about some of it and certain things that i just really didn't like at all and getting to try lots of different things and i was part of like different clubs and just got to collaborate with a lot of people who are doing different degree programs and like learning from a lot of different people because I tried so many different things. And I would say that would just be the biggest thing that I would want to tell myself is to make sure that I am really um, like applying for those special programs. Like we have special courses at SFU that you, you just have to apply to, but you can get into it. So um, if you just try, so put yourself out there and try lots of new things was the main thing for me. Amazing. And Rosie, can you give us some really quick advice? 
those were exactly my two things was try a lot of different things <laughs> um yeah and try to sort of pack away that shyness as much as you can it's 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 really hard and i still work on that today i worked on that yesterday i'm working on that right now so yeah it's not something that you know you're just constantly working on um and the thing i'm super excited about uh for my industry is we're working with sustainability right now so just really helping organizations track their carbon footprint and kind of do a little bit better for the planet um as well. So that for me is where I have a lot of excitement right now. So thanks. Amazing. Thank you. That all sounds so fantastic. Thank you all for sharing your time with us today. Um, a note to our viewers, we have our closing game show happening on the main stage screen. So you can head back over there to participate. But thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having thanks. us. <laughs> Bye.